Most people in life have people that they know, like, and trust. We also have the opportunity in life as we roam the range, if you will, and travel our daily journeys to meet other people, to meet total strangers who literally make us somewhat feel important. I had a lovely exchange with a woman named Marilyn today because she was just kind enough to say, and how are you doing? In the most sincerest, honest, and feelingly loving way. I didn't anticipate that from someone, a retail employee that I've only shopped once or twice with in that store, but she made me feel incredibly welcome. And that was really a great kindness to me in that moment of time. Now, when I tell this story, I'm complimenting a person by her name. I'm not saying where she works because I don't publicly have the right to necessarily give out her information because I don't want her harmed in any way, shape or form by people who might be hazing me by cutting my clothing and cutting my coat and other sorts of aspect of my life. It's sort of a miracle that the Lord has allowed me to continue living, I guess, because people sort of feel like they have the right to harm me. It's not their right to touch my body in any way, shape or form, but someone has done so in the night several times. And I've been out like a light, which means that someone has possibly tainted my food or the fact is that I'm walking several miles a day makes an old man like me just simply pass out completely. I'm usually not that sound of a Sid Leaper. I mean, if someone usually touches me, I tend to wake up. So I guess that's the indication that someone might be polluting what I'm trying to eat or changing out the cans of food that I've chosen with cans of food that they've recanned to taint, to harm my life or harm my body or give me the wrong thing. I am somewhat worried today about pharmacies. And I want to talk a little bit that about that a little bit because what I've learned through asking intelligent, journalistic oriented questions in a Kantian, Kantian theory sort of way, which is an analytical process looking for empirical data, is that in my life, people don't always know what rights are. And possibly in your life, people don't know what rights are either. But in talking with pharmacies, what I learned was that a pharmacist can actually call your physician's office and ask the physician based on an insurance company need, whether or what you are being prescribed a particular prescription for. What that sort of means is that our right to privacy about our own cellular health conditions is no longer our right totally in the land. That insurance companies might be requiring pharmacists to tell them and put on file in a legal file what we're getting prescriptions for. When I visited a phar Walmart pharmacy the other day asking after a prescription that I totally put legally and lawfully on file as a backup script to be anywhere capable of accessing in the world, I was told that they didn't have any copy of that record. I know I gave it to that particular Walmart because it's my community Walmart. I purposely gave it to them. But I was also literally told that I had supposedly been on a prescription in 2007 and that was the last time I had been prescribed there which wasn't exactly truthful based on my recollection. What that means is that either someone modified the record or my old man memory is not remembering something, but I don't really ever frankly remembering being on that product, ever, especially in 2007. Nothing was literally going on for me in 2007 like that. Now, if they mix my file with my son's file, that might be something. If literally it was my name that it was given to, I can't remember that at all. But practically, it was an oddity that not only did they not have a copy of the prescription I asked to be put on federally protected file, that I learned that pharmacists could not only see, they couldn't see apparently allegedly their own Walmart pharmacies files, but somehow they could actually see other pharmacies files of what had been filled and where. It was sort of amazing, actually that they couldn't tell me about things going on in their particular pharmacy right there or any of the national chain pharmacies, which was a misnomer apparently about what the Ohio folks told me, that if I put things on file there, that it would be available in any pharmacy in the world. Even in uh, Guam is what the gal, rem I remember the gal kind of making the comment on, that they literally have sent and been able to pull up a prescription over there. So that what that says to me is that we might have human beings that are getting involved in other people's health care 
in a way that might not necessarily be fully lawful based on opinion. Now, I'm always the guy who's in preventive maintenance mode. You see, I worked for manufacturing for several years as an interpreter, and I learned all about how to prevent problems, and we call that preventive maintenance. It's yobo in Japanese. And in reality, and I probably mispronounced it because it's been a long time since I've done that translation work, but in reality, and I'm being humble about the whole thing, what I'm talking about is that a human being's opinion or religious faith might actually impede a pharmacist's willingness to bestow someone a prescription. Now we can joke a lot about that with regard to areas of birth, um, um, uh, uh, birthing products. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. But with regard to um, birth prevention products, if you will, um, I'm contraceptives, literally, but openly, there might be other ailments that people have that pharmacists might think, oh, that's God's condition on you. We're just going to let you suffer with it or things like that. And that's kind of a concern that our privacy to healthcare is no longer private, that insurance people that we've never met, strangers across the world, are getting access to our files. Or when we go to a conglomerate hospital in our state, that literally any employee who, in theory, might have a right to access our chart could see all of our medical files. They call this continuity of care. I don't believe in that right unless I am personally in that hospital receiving care and the physician says, is it okay if I show this file to so-and-so so that she can help you with her job in caring for you? You see, to me, that would be a total regard for my rights. But making it a blanket policy that they can take my records and show it to any medical student or any human being along the way, even of someone I'm paying a bill to, makes me concerned. It doesn't make me feel like HIPAA laws are being regarded at all. And here's the one piece of that blanket signature that I was talking about in another file that really pisses me off, that it literally says that a hospital, if they so feel like it, can call any part of sort of law enforcement person at any time. But what's worse is that those people can access our records, but they have no stipulations of HIPAA law forcing them to be quiet and professionally silent about our medical conditions. I've looked into this in great detail. It's actually something that's talked about on the internet, that they don't have to regard our privacy under HIPAA law. What that literally means is that if we've got a person in that industry that is not totally on the level or that is lusting after some community person that they've met as a community service servant, but the person said no to them, it literally means they can go to their doctor and say, I want to see that file. And they could find out who all your suitors are or anyone you've mentioned in that moment of time at that point of your life that to the doctor who typically says, so who are you sleeping with? which really is an appropriate question, I don't think, unless there's some sort of transmittable disease, I think that question should never be asked. It's not the right to know. It's not the right to put it in a medical file for anybody and their brother to look at. And I guess that's why I'm concerned with privacy today. And I'm concerned with the privacy of our lives. I'm concerned with the privacy of our records. I'm concerned with the privacy of our computers. I'm concerned with a lot of things of privacy. You see, the social media world has sort of eliminated a lot of our privacies. We share photos of our life. We show, share photos of our trips. We share photos of our families, of our children, of our experiences. But people do voyeur on our lives, and usually they're the people we want to voyeur on our lives. And sometimes there are people just check in and go, okay, she's still alive. He's still with us. I'm glad to know that my little one time a year check or once a month check to make sure that person I really cared for long ago still exists. But in truth, we might not be getting full access to information is absolute truth. But what I mean is, I guess that practically, it'd be really nice if as me as a person, I could know who was looking at me with more regularity, especially in a physician's office. 
especially in a clinic, especially in a hospital. And I guess that's what I'm alluding to, is that I think in this world, we have to have the right to know what human beings are accessing our medical files, why, and the exact date and time they did it. And we also have to know what people in those professions employed by those institutions have the right to say anything in those files about our lives whatsoever. Because if there's someone talking in our medical files that we've never met before in our life, that we've never had a actual appointment with, that there's no proof of that at all, I'd really like to know that, wouldn't you? Now, part of my Magic and Mayhem audio series is, of course, to talk about the magic of God, which I do on occasion, because I really absolutely prefer to be paid to speak in front of groups for that and share the magical stories because I'm a storyteller and I'm a reporter. And the mayhem is really about reporting interesting ideas that come to mind through experiences I have dressed the way that I am as sort of a secret shopper of a lot of places because when you're homeless, you got to go places to have a space to be. Thanks for listening. Think it over. Monitor your own experiences. Evaluate your life in that way. Make sure your own files and records are safe from people and places and things that might impede your rights to do what you'd like in your own health care.